Hello and welcome to another episode of The Hollywood Experience where you're going to get uh, some information from us, Adrian Paul and Ethan Dettenmeyer on some of the uh, bumps and scrapes and some of the things we're doing at The Sword Experience as well as all the stuff that happens in films lately. Ethan, hi, how are you, man? Fantastic. It's a privilege to be here. How are you? I'm good. I'm uh I'm getting ready for our retreat, actually. That's that's what we're doing right now, which is already past gone when you're listening to this. But I guess is Robin Riker. Robin has, has been, been a um in in so many different uh, uh TV shows. Uh she uh started way back in I think 1976 was one of the earliest things. Uh she was in Brothers, she was in um uh MASH. God forbid, MASH, uh, Riptide, she was with Get a Life, Shaky Ground, Thunder Welcome Alley, back Carter. Welcome Back Carter, Days of Our Lives, Airwolf. Airwolf, exactly, so many, many different things, so we have Robin today, I spent a little time chatting with a lovely lady, so uh, let's get back to that, get to that, and then we'll be right back. Hello, good morning, Robin. How are you doing this morning or this afternoon, depending on? But yes, it is afternoon, and I'm doing splendidly, thank you very much. Are yes. you well? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I think we're in the same like kind of time zone, which is always beneficial. Sometimes I've, I've actually spoken to people in New Zealand and Australia because that makes it they're, they're before we woke up or something. I can't remember how it is or oh, yeah. what, the next day, you know, it's kind of uh, they're talking about entirely different <laughs> things. I don't know if you've ever traveled from uh, New Zealand to, to Australia, from Australia to back to Los Angeles, but it's literally getting there before you left. <laughs> I know. I've gone the other way. I've gone New Ze uh, LA to New Zealand, and uh, oh my God, entering New Zealand in the airplane with those mountains and the it's wow, gorgeous, isn't it? It's just stunning. yes, it's stunning. Yeah, it's, what part of New Zealand yeah, did you go to? What part of New Zealand was Auckland. It? Auckland. My yeah. husband was uh, in Auckland. Yeah, and my husband was filming a a. a, a a commercial there and it was going to be in New Zealand and then Thailand and he just said can you throw in a ticket for my wife and they said yes happily so I got to go that's the perks that's of being great. in this business sometimes isn't it you get those yes, extra little is. things that are very useful but, but you've you've yes, not sir. you're not a native of Los Angeles you're a native of New York and you've lived in how many places 37 different dwellings since I was born. LA wow. is absolutely the longest I've been in any one city. And uh, this house I'm in right now is the longest I've ever been in any house. So uh, we're so, setting records here. So, <laughs> so what's your favorite? What's your favorite place to, to have lived in? Aspen. Aspen. My, my, my parents uh, hooked up with, when I was about seven, they reconnected with some uh, friends of theirs from university at Syracuse University. And these people lived in Aspen and my parents wanted, who had been acting and working and writing and directing, um, wanted to start a legit theater there in Aspen. So they partnered with their friends and we loaded up the car and drove across country and, in Aspen alone, I lived in four different places, <laughs> um, but we just went back. Uh, we just had a trip and uh, have a little RV, and which actually is fabulous. It took my husband a long time to convince me to get an RV, but uh, it's just 24 feet and it opens up into what looks like a studio apartment on the Upper West Side. It's adorable. Uh -huh. and, and so we drove up to Aspen and, oh my God, Adrian, I was, I was immediately enveloped in this. Yeah, it's air, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's that, it it's amazing. that. Yeah, it, it does. Aspen's pretty. I, mean, I've only, I think I've only been there once, I think. I mean, I've been to Big Bear and I've been to Tahoe and I've been to all those places yeah. and, and Germany is a couple of great, but it's just getting up in the mountains sometimes just, it just clears your head entirely, doesn't it? Astonishing. And the thing yeah. for me was that was the last place in true theater fashion. My parents divorced um, in, you know, when I was about eight or nine and um, and we moved from Aspen. But uh, the that's so that's where my family was last a whole family. But that isn't really the nostalgic part of it. The town itself, the fact that it's this little nest surrounded by these mountains, you're, it's so cozy. And all the eight, the Victorian buildings 
are the same as I remembered. Of course, now they house Gucci and whoever else, <laughs> as opposed to Joe's ski equipment. But exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's all changed, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, very changed, very changed, but still the same in many ways. So, 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 so tell me, you you came from New York. How did you get into? What, how old were you when you first started acting? Three. Three. And then, what was your first role? Since you were three, what what was the what was that breakout role? <laughs> At three years old. <laughs> it sent me to Hollywood. Yeah. Um, it was the role of the little girl in the play, The Littlest Angel, uh -huh. and I remember my by the first line I ever spoke on stage and it was daddy why is there a star on top of the Christmas tree <laughs> and then he proceeds to tell the story of the littlest angel so uh so yeah. that that was your did you did you did you I know your parents were actors and sometimes when you have parents uh, and they they push their their goals or their likes onto their kids the kids sometimes rebel or they're not quite, did you really take to it from the beginning or did you sort of so to say, what oh, took your time to get into it? Instantly. I loved it instantly. Not only did I just take to it naturally, but I'm genetically predisposed to it, I believe, because I'm third generation actor on both sides of my family. My paternal grandfather was a clown in Ringling Brothers Circus. Oh my gosh. And, uh, and my maternal grandmother was an amateur actress. And then it just all collected, <laughs> you know, in uh, in me, I in guess. You, and, and so <clears throat> after that, after that three-year-old like entrance into acting society, should I say? Yeah. Um, uh, what really sort of uh, took you from there? You did, did a lot of plays from that point on. Yes, when um, my parents had a very practical philosophy: if you have children, use them. <laughs> Although I was not, I learned to make a martini very early. Um, Although I was not just given parts, I had to audition for my parents, you know, and when oh, you did, you had to audition for them. Oh yeah. Because oh, okay. they were pros, you know, and when your own mother tells you you're not right for the part, you can't really call your agent and complain. <laughs> did you have an agent at that time? <laughs> your mother was your agent so it's kind of like a conflict of interest there really know, right exactly <laughs> should, have, should have taken her to court or something i after when my folks divorced my mother went back to boulder to get which was another place i lived um to get her master's degree Colorado Shakespeare Festival there and so I worked for two seasons with that festival so I was started doing shake and 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 loved 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 it the um when and from there where did we go from Boulder we went to Atlanta where she was executive manager of uh, the legit theater there in Atlanta and then we went to South Dakota as one does where, <laughs> for her to teach and um, and while in South Dakota, I was so excited because um, they had, you know, declamation contests and things that you could participate in through the schools. So it was kind of odd, though, because I would go to competition and I was doing an edited scene from Richard III between Lady Anne and Richard at the what he, the corpse is being her husband who is just had killed is being taken somewhere. So I'm doing that scene and the other kids are doing Jimmy in the newspaper boy and the duck. And it was, I don't, they didn't quite know what to make of me, but I played to my strength. <laughs> so. so what brought you, how did you get to Hollywood? How did you come over to, to LA and what was the kind of the process for you? Well, I, uh, I graduated early from high school and um, went to California to join my boyfriend who was going to Stanford, which was another place I lived in a fraternity house on the campus. And um, all my family had gone to Stanford, but my grades weren't quite good enough to get there. So, um, so anyway, I, we moved, I moved out on my own when I was 17 and uh, was doing theater locally and all of that. And then broke up with that boyfriend, got another job, was still working in some theater up there. And I got offered my first 
you know, I was 20, I think, and 21 and offered my first serious job, which, you know, it was working at this great bar in Silicon Valley. They wanted to help me be, you know, come in as a, not a partner, but, you know, somebody that would have a percentage in the company. And I thought, holy smokes, this is serious. If I do this, I have to give it my attention. And I've always wanted to, um, to make acting and writing my living. So I said, no, thank you to that. I went back to New York to audition for uh, a man named Arthur Storch, who was head of the uh, theater department at Syracuse University, because I wanted him to say, no, really, you should probably take up arc welding. Uh, acting is not for you. So, But he said, go for it, do it. And so I went back to California, I packed up my stuff and I moved to uh, Los Angeles with $45, some headshots and a free place to stay. And the universe rewarded me instantly. It was- Was that brothers? No, it was a TV show. All right, well, anybody with math skills can figure out things out now, but it was a television show opposite Joe Forrester, opposite uh, Lloyd Bridges, I mean nazi hunt it was another show that he had and um i had the illustrious role of girl robber the part was so <laughs> small that i had to uh, uh use another character's lines for my audition over at warner brothers but it worked so, oh, so, oh, so did, did you enjoy tv or film better than than actually being on stage at, at that point i'm not gonna like there's there's always you know more yeah. time right, after course. that you know but um, i'm kind of curious what you kind of felt at that particular moment um i loved it i felt as though the universe had said okay you've made the right choice here to try this medium um uh now learn patience i'm still working on that part, but, <laughs> yeah uh, we can all work on that one <laughs> yeah really <laughs> um but i was thrilled i was very very happy and um because i had done so much theater that uh, I, I wanted to try something new. And the fact that I was getting the opportunity to do it was, uh, it was grand. I, I really, I loved it. It was wonderful to do so, it, to learn new things. So did you, did you go and get yourself an agent immediately or, or how, did, how did it work? I mean, you know. I had finished a show in Northern California play and um, the, uh, one of the actors, her, boyfriend was very well connected with an agency here in Los Angeles. So he wrote me a letter of recommendation. And I sent that in with my headshots, I sent out to several people. But but the people for whom I had the letter of recommendation, uh, called me in right away and and uh, and signed me and this I think is a good tip for a lot of actors who are aspiring, which is they told me they signed me because when I walked in the door, I looked like the picture I had sent. Them. <laughs> than, you know, doesn't Rather that always? Like, yeah, because like, OK, we yeah, I know. Slam like, all up and we <laughs> yeah. But, you know, sometimes I think, you know, we forget because, you know, as we change our look or we get older or we change something, you know, we forget to change the headshot. And, what? you know, that could either go, this isn't the person I saw, you know, this, you know, I know. And it also, there's a person I know who has using a, a headshot from, uh, he's not acting so much anymore, but it's the sh headshot he uses for his representation and, you know, serving the S Screen Actors Guild or whatever it is. And I keep going, really? <laughs> we, we all see you in the boardroom, you know, <laughs> so I just, you know. So which, which was your first real series? Because you've done a, a... Let me say that again. <laughs> which, which was your first series? Because you've done a, a, a number of things. Uh, you know, you did Thunder Alley, you did the Gregory Hines show. Uh, you did uh, Days of Our Lives. You've done a bunch. Which was the first one that, uh, you know, you, because it's a, different, it's a different animal being on a series week oh, in, yeah. week out than it is just coming in as a guest star. You were correct in your guests initially. Brothers was my first television series. Okay. So, so how many episodes did you do on Brothers? You did a, a number of them, didn't you? How many? Eight, zero, 80. 80, 80. So that's, a, that's a, a fair amount of, what was it like for you at that point? Because now you're on a show that's done 80 episodes or probably done more at that point. Yeah. 
how was it at that point now you know what, what are you feeling like uh you know doing this type of i mean it's 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 fabulous you're working in every week getting paid regularly you know i mean <laughs> isn't that lovely isn't that nice yeah exactly <laughs> Uh, well, it was it was wonderful because it was a it was a three camera show with an audience. So it was um, the perfect amalgam of uh, stage and film. Right. Because we had the immediate response, response of the audience, yeah. which, as you know, is yeah, it's, golden. It's, well, it, and, it can uh, be sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily work because sometimes the things you think work on other oh. other shows don't work in that particular that particular. You know, what did I do wrong? You know, That's it's, right. It's bizarre. But, uh, That's why you never hold for the laugh. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was it was a great experience, and we had people come regularly uh, to the set. You know, uh, I mean, to the audience on nights that we were filming, and um, it, it was. I tell you, we did the first, I think we did eight episodes, seven or eight episodes first. And at the end of the seventh episode, we were going to have a big celebration. And we went to, we shot at Paramount, which was thrilling, you know, because I've always loved old movies. And so to drive through those Paramount gates, you know. Yeah, that was day. my first series as well. On Paramount. Really? really? Yeah. Yeah, Isn't it was the Colby's. Yeah, back in. Oh, yes. The Colby's. Yeah. So that was the Isn't first time. Paramount. It was Paramount. It was fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the commissary food's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, that was great. And um, we get we did our seventh episode and then the party. We moved to another soundstage on the lot for a big party and champagne and whatnot. And clink, 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 says the producer, I have an announcement to make. We are, this isn't the end. We are, have just been picked up for 50 Five O <laughs> episodes. It was the biggest pickup in television history at that. So I, I can just wait a minute. I can just see the moment. All the actors went, "Oh, great! I've got to call my agent. Get my deal re re renegotiated." <laughs> <laughs>